We are now in the year 2018. Last week I reviewed the season 1 finale and we are still going strong with the TMNT 2012 reviews. I did mention this way when it ended that I would review the show from the beginning. Well, look no further because now we're in season 2. Hello everyone, Mega Man NG and I welcome you all to my TMNT 2012 episode review. This is for season 2, episode 1, The Mutation Situation. So yeah, here's how this is going to go down. I'll be providing a summary of the episode, as well as some of the main points. And believe me, a lot has changed now that we're in the second season. Some of it good, but trust me, by the time I'm done with this, all of it's going to be really bad. Let's get started. Some time has passed after the Turtles stopped the Krang in the Season 1 finale. Things may be good... But for April, it's a different story, due to her dad's eagerness to keep her safe. But they soon get word that the Krang are delivering a shipment of mutagen to the Shredder. Their efforts in trying to stop them go horrifically wrong, when one canister of mutagen ends up striking April's father, turning her into a bat-like mutant. With her father now a monster, can the Turtles be able to save April's dad before the effects become permanent? And what of April? Will she trust them again after this? TMNT 2012, well, we are now at its second season. And even though I missed out on it, I am now enjoying season 2 for what it is. For starters, much has changed. The intro gets a bit of an update. The only, there are some noticeable changes, but the most noticeable is that in one part they show like a collage of all the villains the Turtles have encountered last season. Along at the end with a cameo of one Casey Jones. He'll be making his appearance this season, and when we cover that, we'll cover that. New season also means a lot of new changes, and just to show the seriousness this change has become, April's dad has sadly become the first victim of it, turning into some kind of bat monster when a canister of mutagen was about to hit April when her father moved out of the way to save her. But unfortunately, he ends up becoming exposed by mutagen, like covered in mutagen. And as he tries to get it off, he falls down and like sees like a flock of bats. Having the bats co interact with the mutagen caused April's dad, Kirby O'Neill, to turn into some kind of mutated bat monster. And seeing that bat monster is rather scary. Rather scary because the guy was once human. He can't speak, and the only response he has is him like using like screeches and stuff like that i can't help but feel, feel bad for her dad but i feel even worse for april because april saw the entire thing happen and when she discovered the truth oh man this had ma this has major repercussions and by episode's end april wanting nothing to do with the turtles because well she blames them for this to happen i feel bad i really do i mean Seeing her father become mutated is one thing, and then learning that the turtles probably had a bit of han a hand in it is worse. It's just ra really, really depressing. And it doesn't help that now with the mutagen out there, rather 64 cans of mutagen all over New York City, this just makes the situation worse. And I feel that this one pivotal moment is going to start like some kind of big story arc for the season with the turtles having to recover all the mutagen before it's too late. And even if they do, what new threats will emerge from it? I don't really know for sure, but I will say that this season is going to be rather intense. The Krang are still allied with the Shredder, until the episodes end when they realize the Krang failed. Shredder sees them as useless and decides to take matters into his own hands. Also, the Krang have now gotten a bit stronger, packing with it new firepower, especially some kind of monster suit, which has, but has like pretty much cannons on his butt. Uh, okay, I've seen the Krang do some really weird stuff, but this takes the cake. This takes the cake, especially with how Donatello reacted to it. The thing has butt cannons, and I don't know whether to laugh or just shudder. I don't think it would really matter, to be honest, because, jeez, the Krang are this determined to make sure it would go through. But it didn't. The episode is truthfully intense with action all throughout, but... You want to know what drives it really home? It drives it home in terms of emotion and moments with the characters. Especially April, like I mentioned. She's been hurt by this ordeal because her father is now a mutant 
and her friends, the Turtles, are were pretty much responsible for this because, well, they kind of screwed up. And a screw-up that is so big that the Turtles lost one of their most well-known allies. Donatello is hurt by this the most as well because... All throughout last season, he's been trying so hard to get to have like to show his feelings for her, and seeing it all happen, all transpired with with April just telling Donatello straight to his face, "I want nothing to do with you or your brothers ever again. Don't touch me." That sort of thing. It hurts. It hurts especially for Donnie because he's now carrying another burden. And like I mentioned, the mutagen dropping all over the city is going to set up many new threats for the Turtles to deal with this season. Favorite moments? Well, Mikey being Mikey as usual, not to mention the mention of a cheese... What is it, a cream cheese monster? Uh, Mikey has some weird imagination, but either way, my favorite moments were like the TMNT trying to stop Krang, only for their screw-up to happen with April's dad being a monster... April's dad eventually becoming a mutated bat monster, and I swear Mikey was going to call it Wingnut, but that would be disrespectful. And the TMNT's efforts in hopefully trying to save April's dad, only for it to fail when April learns the truth, and the bat monster gets so angry that he breaks out of his cage and escapes. And that pretty much sets in motion what's going to happen throughout this season. Don't worry. This won't be the last we'll see of Kirby O'Neill, and the next time we'll see him, hopefully he'll get himself cured. If not, then things are going to go really bad for the Turtles. I assure you of that. I'm giving this a 9, because the episode started off really strong, but then it just whacks you right in the face with a curveball. It just whacks you in the face and saying, nope, you thought things were going to get good? Nope, they just throw a 180 out of the park, and just like, oh my god, why does it have to happen? And it did, and I'm like... Oh man, the Turtles done screwed up big time. And even Splinter knows that, sure, they can't dwell on the past, but what matters now is the new situation at hand. There are canisters of mutagen all over New York, and it's up for the Turtles to find them before who knows what. But all I do hope for is that the Turtles can be able to fix this mess. If not, then there will be bonds that will be too impossible to repair, or by here it will be rather strained. So, what do you guys think of the season one, I mean, season two episode? Was it good? Was it bad? Let me know in the comments. Next episode is going to be one that surprisingly, I just looked up the episode guide for this, and yeah, I knew it. They're airing episodes out of order again. Again. I'm beginning to wonder what was Nickelodeon thinking when they decided to do that. But yeah, next episode review will be episode 2, Fall of a Leader. It's actually episode 3, but I'm following via the season code. Shout out to Brisan1993, because I have a feeling she's going to be telling me all the episodes that were aired out of order in this season, so that way I can be able to get things orderly. And I'm hoping you guys enjoy these episode reviews, because yeah, I love the TMNT, and I want to make sure I review all these episodes, so that way I can be prepared for the eventual Rise of the TMNT 2018 series that's going to be coming out this year. I still need to provide my thoughts on it, and when I do, you guys will see it. Trust me, you will. So that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. It really does mean a lot to me, and I will see you guys next, or rather see you guys tonight when I provide my thoughts on episode 2, Follow the Leader. This is Mega Man NJ signing off. Peace out. Booyakasha!